There's scenes here at Perry Park. Chris Lynn has taken the wild thing and sent him. Welcome back to another episode of the Beyond the Sidelines podcast. With me, as always, Finn Morton and Angus Bryan. We've got Finn on the phones today. Um, bit unorthodox. Yeah, where, know. where are you, mate? Um, somewhere in Victoria, mate. I'm not quite sure, but I'm going to great lengths to avoid you guys. I like, think so. Is, after Japan, you know, I had a few weeks in the studio, and now it's like, nah, mm. let's get out. Let's pull a runner. You got some getting relapse, are you? Basically anything to get out of South Brisbane. I don't blame you, if I'm honest. I mean, the yeah. south of Brisbane is quite bad. <laughs> it is. It is. Once you, get past Ox- once you get past Oxley, it's a bit of a uh, fend for yourself. A I don't think bit. it's really the river. I think we can. Uh, I think we can blow up no, all mate. the bridges. Us, us Northsiders, we're always ripping on the south side, aren't yeah. we? Mate, we're not going to blow up Taylor Bridge. She's in a. She's a good bridge. <laughs> her and her glory. She's a. Uh, she's a. Yeah. Uh, all of her glory. Bridge. She is indeed. Yeah, all right. It's- Guys, let's get straight into the Fast Five. The Fast well, Five is where uh, we go through. Hmm? Sorry, can I just want to button for a second. Go. Garcia, the big story this week, Just you start us off with this, not Fast Five stuff, but someone has been putting tiny cowboy hats on pigeons in Vegas. Tell us all about it. <laughs> Ty- what? What are you on about? <laughs> what are you talking about, mate? We were talking about it before. Someone's putting tiny cowboy hats <laughs> on pigeons in Vegas. <laughs> what are you on about, mate? Do you want to explain yourself? He was the one who told me. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, okay. Um, that is a stitch up. If You're ever actually I've seen insane. One. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's, an, it's an actual thing. What's Look happening? This video is on it. I've said it twice, mate. It's clear do this guy. It's clear this guy has too much time on his hands. <laughs> you do. Looking I do, at mate. St- I do. You really no, do. Again, so someone's putting tiny cowboy hats on pigeons in Las Vegas. Do you want to get on yeah. with the Fast Five, mate? It, I think it might be you, mate. <laughs> Have you been here in the... We haven't seen you in four days. Yeah. Maybe he's in Las Vegas. Mysterious. Yeah. You got me. You got me. You got yeah, me. No. Um, so the Fast Five is where we have five topics. We spend a minute on each. Let's get straight into it. Uh, boys, the MCG pitch. What's gone wrong? Uh, will this mean the Boxing Day test leaves Melbourne potentially? What have we seen, Gussie? Yeah, well, this is a strange story um, coming out of the news recently about the MCG. Of course, WA were playing against Victoria in a Sheffield Shield match there. Two batsmen, actually, Sean Marsh and Marcus Stoinis, both went off, or didn't go off, You're but they got of, injured. You're a fan of Stoinis. I'm a fan of Stoinis. Stoinis, Daddy. Oh, he can hit a ball an absolute mile. He's absolute... <laughs> he's a rig, and I love it. I love watching him bat. <laughs> Sorry, um, he, They were both left uh, battered and bruised after some unpredictable uh, pitch conditions. Finn, do you want to chat more about it. Well, no. Again, I won't ramble on as much as you, mate, but it was an <laughs> unplayable pitch. Yeah. Unplayable pitch. So, um, the Victorian bowlers were bowling at the two said batsmen, mm. and basically it was pitching up right to their body, to the point where it's an unplayable delivery, can't defend it, get injured, good night nurse. Yeah. yeah. They've always said that the MCG pitches sort of, it doesn't do anything, so... Well, I believe actually, this. They well, they yeah. wanted to make this pitch a lot livelier. It's a drop in wicket, so they've done all this stuff off the actual field. Yeah, off site. Off site. Um, and they've wanted a livelier track for the bowlers, and it's actually caused the match to be abandoned. Well, if you remember, just after the Boxing Day test last year, or maybe just before, uh, they did like a review of the MCG pitch, and it was deemed poor mm. in a grading system. So it hasn't been flashed for a while. Mm. You know, should it move to Perth? Perth want it. Yeah. Perth have come out, they want it. But well, maybe. Time will tell. Yeah. Well, according, well, according to move. our mate at the uh, Allen Border Field the other day, we were robbed. Yeah, Brisbane we were. were robbed. Um, but anyway, guys, Sydney FC, they're killing it as they always do. Seems to be the same old thing every year. They're top of the league. Are they too good for the A League? I think they are. They can't. They can't compete in Asia. But they're absolutely no. killing it in the A League once again, eh? Yeah, they like, really are. They beat, they beat the Raw five one. Yeah. I think they're seven or eight points clear at the top of the pile. Uh, so. only five. And no one is it five? Yeah, it's only five. Ah. There you go. Should have fact checked. Yeah. yeah but again, it's um the you kind of have Sydney FC, top tier. Yeah. And then everyone else. Like there is a clear divide. And but again, they can't compete in Asia. So until they take that next step, you know. What are they doing? I mean, what are do they you, doing, Gusman? Do you mm. really care about an Asia Cup or anything like that? 
Asia Shield, whatever it's called, do. the Super, whatever. You do, especially the Asian Champions League. Yeah, oh, there we go. When you even when you well, when you're competitive so dominantly, so when you're so dominant in the A League, you kind of have to take that next step, don't you? Or you have to aspire to that level, and they don't want to for some reason, or they don't have the ability to do so. Yeah, well, they just have the best squad out of every team by far, just no doubt. Yeah, well, that's often the case with Sydney sides, though. I mean, you've seen it in the rugby league. You've seen it in the basketball at the moment. It seems like Sydney is just where all the talent decides to go. I mean, it's pretty much the de facto capital of Australia. So I wouldn't I mean, say that. <laughs> I'd say Melbourne is. But uh, oh wow, okay. where, where was the first Parliament held? Melbourne, Ballarat. <laughs> Definitely not Ballarat, mate. Cool, dude. <laughs> First Parliament in Melbourne. Oh, huh? well, that is the capital. Where um, does everyone go for tourism? Mate? Yeah, Melbourne it's is terrible there. To Ballarat. Yeah, Ballarat. it is. I know. Let's yeah. Let's clarify that for the for the sake of the people. For of Ballarat, the sake of the people of Ballarat, Mars Stadium out there. What mate, a place let's, to let's be. be. Let's be a voice for the voiceless. Actually, on that, uh, Ballarat getting an A League game next week. Uh, Western United. Interesting. Hosting the Phoenix, I believe. I like it. I like it. Special shout out to Adam LaFondra in that Sydney game as well, getting his first hat trick in six mm. years. Mm. Whew, it's been a while. Um, new Bulldogs skipper. Is it the right choice? Western Bulldogs. Eastern Wood made the decision to step down. Made the decision. Who knows? Um, it's probably been coming for a while due to his inconsistent form. Um, when he first came into the fold as captain in 2016, um, when. Uh, Bob Murphy came down injured towards the end of the season. Um, he basically he was in red hot form, absolutely killer. There was no one else who was going to be captain, um, and now he's gotten a bit inconsistent. Um, sorry, I'm rambling on a little bit here. Well, it's not as though the Bulldogs had a bad season. No, like, as a supporter, would you say they had a bad season this year? Not where we should be, but I think we were lucky to make. Well, we were obviously lucky to make finals um, due well, to a really bad start to the season, but a good tail end. They lifted at the right time, didn't they? They no, did. He's um, head and shoulders. I think he's the leader of the team. Mark Spontapelli. You know, last year he did. Yeah, he didn't have this. He didn't have the C next to his name, but he's the face of that team. Um, mm-hmm. and he's a leader both on and off the field. Anyway, so yep. it's a logical next step for a team who want to take that next step. So, I completely agree. Yeah. I think Marcus Bontempelli is 100% the right decision. Um, and you're right, he was, even though he didn't have the C um, or the armband, he really did lead the team. He was giving people, he was getting angry at people on the field for not giving an effort they should have, things like that, not giving those yeah. one percenters. He was, by, he's by far our best player, um, no doubt about that, all Australian. And he's resilient. Um, He's resilient too, man. I mean, he copped a couple mm. of eye gouges from Tony He did. Brand. Elbows. And he doesn't really yep. retaliate that much. So that's what you want from a skipper. Um, BBL. We're starting this month. Starting in a few days. Uh, probably next week, I believe. Um, will it top last year's competition? Or will we see the same old BBL? What do you guys think? Well, I mean, the same old, old BBL was good before last year. I mean, last year sort of... Yeah... It made me not like BBL cricket as much. They decided to... Gussie, Gussie, Gussie. Hey, no, bloody oath we care. This year, the Heat, winning it in the women's, winning it in the men's. Double. Heard it here well, that, first. I mean, i got to say, that's got Scoop. me excited. That's got me excited, and Scoop. I want to. I really want to go to games. I reckon it's a good idea to go, go to games this year as well, because it's, it's going to be better than watching it on TV, because sure. they, they still have that deal going where some of them are on 7, some of them... We're well, on Fox. Well, if you've got KO Sports. Yeah, you get to watch all of them if you've got KO. So Stop plugging me. KO. Oh, we've got Dude, KO. we love no, free reads. KO. Again, from a Heat point of view, from a Brisbane, Brisbaneite point of view, is that what yeah. we call Brisbane, Brisbane people? Uh, think about it. Chris Lynn, Ben Cutting. Tom um, Banton, A.B. Davilliers. Davilliers. <laughs> the yeah, list goes the on. The list goes on. Literally that, till uh, about six or seven or eight. Like, they're really good in the bat. Yeah, but then we've got strong bowlers too. Yeah. We do. So it's... um. This is the year, gents. This is the year we uh, mm. get back to the top. But on that, is that how much passion is there really in the BBL competition from both fans and players? Or I is think it there's. More of a gimmick? I think there's a lot of passion from uh, the fans. I think. B- well, I, I think the Brizzy Heat. I think, oh, I think I, the Brizzy Heat have the best fan base. If I'm honest, probably. Brisbane currently, currently. currently. Perth Scorchers. Oh yeah, probably Scorchers. But then, then us. Yeah. Look, I, I don't mind yeah, it. I think Brisbane have a great fan base, and I think the atmosphere at those BBL games are game. quite special. Mm, it is. R- rightly or wrongly, I compare it to the women's game, and like I saw the reactions of you know 
how jubilant the Brisbane Heat women were when they won the title. Yeah. And, you know, they were genuinely happy. And I know the men are the same, but I think the men's game is a bit more of a gimmick at yep. this time of year. And that's just what T20 cricket is now because it's so commercialised. Oh, it definitely is. Um, it definitely is. That it's, it's more about the money. Speaking about know, Brisbane, um, we're bidding for the Olympics in uh, 20, for 2032. Queensland. Queensland. Is, so yeah. there's three cities slash regions. Gold Coast, Brisbane, Sunshine Coast are all making a bid. Guess what the name of it that they're kind of coining for it is? I don't know. What is What is it? SEQ 2032. Ah. Impossibly the the worst name for an Olympics. Well, no, that's what they're going to call it. You know how they'll go like the Tokyo 2020? Yeah. It's going to be SEQ 2032. That's got a nice... I love that. It's got a nice ring to it. People aren't going to know where that is. Exactly. That's what I mean. You you hear about Tokyo and you go, yeah, sweet, Japan. Mm. SEQ? Yep. What? Sounds like a water company. (laughs) Can the Sunshine State... Yeah, it does. Can the Sunshine State realistically host this tournament, though? I think so. Uh, Yeah. Look, Australia has, and Queensland especially, have some really great grounds. I mean, we forget the the, uh, Suncorp Stadium. That's one of the greatest ones. Not much much is going to be there. No. Um, The Gabba. Sevens. uh, Yeah. I mean... Sevens a bit. Sevens a bit, Suncorp. Of course. Football. Actually... They might have it at Seabus down on the Gold Coast. Um, yeah. yeah, because that's where they uh, that's where they used to host the, the World HSBs. Series stop. Yeah. Well, I mean, they yeah. just had the so, Commonwealth Games on the Gold Coast, so that's ready. Yeah, there were some prob- yeah. there were some problems with public transport and stuff. I know mm. around there, oh, so it's it pretty good. Yeah, I thought it was. But, pretty oh, good. was it? Yeah. The, Olymp- they had the Olympics problems. is a step up, though, isn't it? Both, yeah. You know, from a you know venue point of view, but also from the actual city itself. You know. Does Brisbane have enough hotels? Are they big enough? You know, I guess I think so. they've got, what, 12, 13 years now to prepare for it, so plenty of time. But if the federal government signs off on it, then SEQ 2032, the bid will be made officially. So yeah. um, I hope it does. It would be something cool to look forward to, eh? I hope um, so, too. But yeah, plenty of planning, plenty of... Yeah. Uh, Plenty of upgrades needed. Yeah. Well, I would argue that Queensland is yeah. potentially one of the best prepared states for it just due to its tourism money. It brings in, I think, around 40 to $50 million a year just in tourism money alone. So they're kind of prepared for that tourism. Um, but speaking about well, the Olympics... That's, that's, sorry, keep going. Oh, sorry. That is that is the big attraction of it, though, the tourism aspect. That was the big Gold Coast thing. Also, we'll add um, the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup Australia and New Zealand are going to co co bid co bid tournament. I'd like that. Yeah, that should be that should be announced on Friday, I think, so the day this is released. So um, keep your eyes peeled for that one. That'll be awesome. Well, speaking about the Olympics, uh, we had a potentially future Olympian of next year, Minna Atherton, the world record holder for a hundred meters backstroke in the short course format, ISL London Raw swimmer, uh, Brisbane grammar, uh, girls grammar, old girl. Um, Minna Atherton, boys, so good. Yeah, what a great What guest. an absolute legend. Thank you very much, Minna, for coming on. But you can hear what she had to say about all of her swimming uh, advice and experiences so far right here. So we've got Minna Atherton in the studio today. Minna Atherton, swimming world record holder. Yeah. I mean, this is a coup. This yeah. is awesome. Uh, Brisbane Girls Grammar, old girl, alumnus. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you guys? Good, thank you. You're also good. part of the London Raw team or squad. How's that been in the International Swimming League? Um, yeah, it's been really good. Um, it's the first year we've been doing it. So, yeah, I've been having a really great time. It's really fun to race my team. Yeah, for sure. And we were talking about it before off air. You go to like eight different... Why, why do you, even is it? There's eight teams and you go to all these different countries and you're going to Vegas next week, which is just absurd. Yeah. Um. <laughs> There's um, eight teams, four European, four American, and all different countries on each team. And we had two prelim matches of the same team, so two American, two European, and then the other four teams. So there's Group A, Group B. I was in Group B. So the first group went, did two meets, and then a couple of weeks later we went, did two meets. And then we had the Derby, so four American, four European together. And then the top two American, top two European <laughs> go to the final. Oh, so, yeah. it sounds yeah. very confusing. Very confusing. I'm so struggling <laughs> to keep up. <laughs> yeah, so you're off to the final. Yeah. Where's that being held? 
Vegas. Vegas. So that's yeah. this Saturday. Oh, yeah. Ooh. What a location. Well, not this Saturday, no, but you're we, going we, to Vegas yeah, this Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. I say, what a location. Wow, Love like to go to Vegas for swimming. That'd be awesome. Yeah, well, let's talk good. about that record. Of course, you broke it in the 100 meter backstroke at the Eyeless uh, meet. In Hungary. Yep. Yes. What was going through your head when you were just absolutely smashing everyone else? Um, well, I couldn't really see myself. Yeah. So I didn't know how far I mean, in front or anything I was. But um, yeah, it was really fun. I had had a, a race before that. that I had the medley relay. Then 20 minutes later, I had the 100 back individual and I broke the record in that. So yeah, it was a bit of a surprise. But yeah, I was really happy with it. Yeah, well, you must have been very pleased with yourself. Um, did it feel like it was the best you swum, or was it? How did it compare to other? Um, well, it's a bit different this competitions than normal FINA competitions because we have not much time to recover. It's only a two-hour session for two days, and yeah, no recovery time. You do about three hundred swim down after your race, and then get back up into the marshalling room and oh. go again. But yeah. I don't know. It felt really, really good. Did yeah. you think you could do that when you were in the middle of the race? You're like, actually, I'm actually making pretty good time here. Um, I was like just a bit off it in the medley, really. So I had mm. a, another shot at it. And, uh, yeah, I just went Got for it. it. And it was Katrina Hoshu's record, correct? Katinka Hoshu. Yeah. I don't know how to yeah. say that. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> yeah. my bad. It was, and she was next to me in the she race. She was next to you in the race. Yeah. In her home country, too. Yes. That's awesome. But yeah, she was a good sport about it. That's yeah. good. Yeah. That's good. Well, you're coached by David Lash. Um, he also coached you at B, uh, BGGS, uh, am I correct? He, at the Grammar Swim Club. Yeah. At yeah. BGS yeah. Swim yeah, Club. Okay. I was 10, yeah. Yep. How has he helped you develop to the swimmer you are today? Um, he's been really helpful. I've been with him for nearly 10 years and he's known me since I was young and he knows how to train me properly and what I need to get to where I have gotten, obviously. That's mm. awesome. And he was there on the day. He was, He was yeah. your coach. He's yeah. still your coach for London Raw. Yeah. How That's happy was he? He was very happy. He, <laughs> there's a video of him falling yep. over. <laughs> yeah. He looks ecstatic yeah. in it. Um, well, he's um, he's coach uh, swimmers like Emily Seabom, was mm-hmm. it? Yeah, she's um, with us for a bit. So what are the s- sort of things he's told you to help you improve your swimming? Um, everything he does helps me. Um, yeah. Obviously, he's hard on me sometimes more than others, but <laughs> yeah, I just take it and do my best. For sure. Yeah. And you were part of the 2018 Commonwealth Games team at the Gold Coast. I was. How was that? It was an experience. An experience? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't race as well as I wanted to, but mm. it was good to be in the village and see everyone else and, yeah, race my For country. sure, for sure. And, I mean, it's not. It's coming up soon, 2020. Yes. How are you feeling? Um, pretty good. I've got a bit of confidence this year, yep. um, but we'll see how it goes in June yep. trials. Yeah, I was about to say, when are the qualifiers and the... Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're in June. In June? Yeah. Isn't the competition in like July or August? Yeah. So we th- we used to have um, two months in between trials and the benchmark competition, but they changed it last year to give us like more, less time to... To get ready. Yeah, like <laughs> media pr- um, pressure and everything yeah. piles up over two months. That's so they just have, we have two month, two weeks at home and then we go into camp. Yeah. So, so Tokyo. Yeah. Yeah. Any plans for when you're over there? Um, well, hopefully, if I make it. <laughs> you um, will. I have been to Japan a few times, so I've seen most uh, everything. But yeah, yeah awesome. it should be a bit different with the country. For sure, having. for sure. Yeah. And, you know, in the athlete's village, what's it like being in an athlete's village? Um, it's really good. Yeah. It's like you walk down the street and you just see all these athletes you've only seen on TV. And, yeah, it's. it's yeah. Yeah, you're a bit starstruck. And it was like that at the Com Games. What was it? Who did you see? Who was? Who's been? Have you been starstruck? I guess yet by um, anyone? I didn't actually see many people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ma- What's well, the Com Games? So there's not as many. Like you don't get the Americans yeah, there and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, there's a few people around. Well, I was going to say, what are what are the, some of the favourite swimmers in the Australian setup that you look up to? Um. It's like everyone who's been on the team for so long that yeah. just have so much experience. They've handled all the pressure and they continue to perform well. And yeah, just everyone. Mm. Love them all. Definitely. And why did you choose swimming as a sport? What got you into it like initially? Uh, primary school, I didn't train, but I was doing quite well at like Friday night meets and stuff like that. And my PE teacher was like, you should start training. <laughs> and for a few years, I was like, no, I don't want to. Um, but then... Year six, I think I just came home. I was I just decided I wanted to start training, so I went to John Carew, which was a club um, out at Nudgee, I think. Mm-hmm. Mate, no, not Nudgee, somewhere. Somewhere, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I trained there for a bit. Did a bit of learn to swim because I hadn't actually 
learnt to swim properly. <laughs> um, but yeah, then I trained. It flooded in 2011. And I moved to Grandma, and I've been there ever since. Oh wow! It flooded. Yeah. Plenty of swimming in, in 2011. Yeah. <laughs> 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 pool flooded. Yeah. Who would have thunk it? Um, so you swam obviously at B- for BGGS as well. What was yeah. the school competition like there? Um, yeah, QG is a bit like ISL actually. It's yeah. a bit oh. the same sort of vibe. Um, everyone's like behind you, the teams, um, so much cheering, super loud. Mm. You just do it, you get up, do your race for the team. Well, so, what's yeah. it like competing against the other girls from the other schools? Um, well, it's great to see all your friends that you make over the years. Um, yeah, just it's really fun. Mm. Any, any competitive rivalries between schools? Um, yeah, girls' yeah. grammar. We were about fourth, and then the year after I left, we came third, which was really <laughs> good to hear. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, but, yeah, between uh, St. Peter's, NBC, and State High, there's a massive rivalry, and Girls Come is always trying to get up there. That's so, good. That's yeah. good. Mm. You were swim captain, correct? I was. Yeah. Yes. Who Was Kate Norris your? Yeah. Yeah, Kate, awesome. Yeah. What was that experience like? It was super fun. Yeah. Um, I love Kate. Um, I love working with her and all my other year 12 friends and yeah it was really fun sure did you play any other sports when you were younger i did volleyball in year uh, eight but then i started swim training too much so <laughs> i couldn't train anymore right. unfortunately i loved it but so yeah. why did you choose swimming just I the love of it, it. Yeah, yeah the good at, you're good, <laughs> at, good at, at it yeah. yeah and then i grew to love it yeah so yeah here i am for wow sure, for sure you obviously set your record on the short course um that's the kind of format that isl takes all the time yeah yeah well this is the first year we've done it and they yeah. have spoken about doing a long course meet but it's a lot harder to recover after long course i'm not sure is it? why yeah, yeah i was about to say because it's the same distance is yeah. it the turns or is it the length you I, I actually don't, don't know, know i've yeah. just found in past experience it's harder to recover after a 50 meter race rather than 25 short oh, course, yeah. interesting which one do you prefer so short, do you prefer short, short course? course yeah, yeah. Well, i mean you set the world record yeah. on it so you might like it a little bit more yeah so is there any training that you have to do that's different with short course and maybe longer swimming uh, races? Short course is a lot more like skills based. You have to okay. be really good at turns, your underwaters, your finishes, starts. It's all the little uh, details about it. Yeah. Other than long course, it's just your techni- your free swim. Yeah, okay. So I do a lot of I do short course training in the morning and then long course in the afternoon. And yeah, I work on my underwaters mainly. Cool. So how often do you train a week? I do eight or nine sessions swimming and then two gym and one Pilates. Jesus. How does the Pilates help you? Um, it's just like more core um, yep. stability. Mm. Are you, have you been yeah. suggested to do that by anyone or is this something you've um, taken on yourself? Or A few people who I used to train with like started doing it and then I did it. I didn't really like it and then I got <laughs> back into it. I moved to a different place and I really like it now. Yeah, yeah. awesome. So are there any people at your swim club that recognize you want to maybe be like you is there any advice that you might give them um well there's like there's a few girls who are younger and i think they look up to me but yeah. i don't want to they do that. okay yeah. i'll say it. they do <laughs> okay hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> um yeah the advice i'd give them is just like i like to just trust the process like you're not always swimming your best but you have done the work and you just gotta do your best yeah awesome day. for sure What's it like for you in the week of, day of, minute before a race? What's your process? Um, day of, I just try not to think about the race. I like to have, I've started having coffee before, like ah. two hours before. Just What's I, your go-to coffee then? Just uh, the ice latte. Yes. Yeah. I knew I liked you. Ice latte. <laughs> I knew I liked you. Oh, Got to go latte. the ice latte. Yeah, I've had oh. two this morning already. Oh, yeah. I've had one. So. Absolutely buzzing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, long black for me. Yeah. Any music? Anything that goes through? Uh, I do have a race day playlist, but I, yeah, I listen to that when I am doing my pre-swim. Cool. Yeah. What gets you ready? You walk yeah. out, you know, you've got the, the gown on, whatever the swimmers have, the, yeah. By the way, cap yeah, on, the I've, headphones. I've been meaning to ask, why does everyone do that? Why does everyone walk out like pumped up? It looks and menacing. Yeah, like... <laughs> In the zone, you know, bit of yeah. confidence. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah. Is that a thing you like doing or... I don't listen just to music because I walk out. I just ah. walk out, yeah. Good, eh? Yeah. Good. Anyway, so what's next for Minna Atherton? Uh, well, Vegas this weekend. Yeah. Oh, I leave this weekend. It's next weekend. Um, and then I've got a few training camps coming up and then trials. Awesome, sweet. Yeah. Well, we hope to see you at 2020. We know you'll make it. Um, we'll be keeping close eye. Finn mm. will be there as yeah, well. he will. So <laughs> you can go see him there. Um, thank you very much, Minna. Thank Cheers you. for coming in today. No worries. Thanks. Cheers. Minna Atherton 
right there. Thank you so much for joining us. What did you think, Gussie Gussie? You were there. Unfortunately, Finn was not. Yeah. Wish he could have been. Poor form, uh, Finn. You didn't show up for this one either. Uh, he would have loved to have been there, but he's got more yeah, important things to do. Well, yeah. I mean, Minna was great to hear from, I and I really hope she gets into that Olympic uh, side, that Australian Olympic side, because I reckon she deserves it. And we're setting records like she is. No, she should be there next year. Should and be. maybe she's there for the next Olympics and maybe the one in Queensland. SEQ 2032. Yeah. That's that's thinking ahead, Gussie, a bit far, mate, I think. And oh. for Tokyo, they'll move on from there. Being optimistic, was the, um, mate. Was she, was she at the Com Games? She certainly was. Yep. Yeah, okay, so she can handle the pressure. She can, she um, can, she how can. Did she go, how, how did she go there? I think she didn't do great individually, but then in the relays she did quite well. I think they got like a that. silver medal. I think they got a silver in the relays, but she didn't do like I think she was in the medley. But I think yeah. in individually she didn't do great. But she's a world record holder now. Come on, David Lush is the I mean, coach. Yeah, Australia do tend to do pretty well in the relays, don't they? They have we a, do. um, above par swimming program, don't they? And I think best she's swimming. come a long way. Clearly, I'd say we have the best swimming program in the world. Probably. It'd be up there. America? Uh, well, who America's has the probably most? better, but... Well, no, who, prob- consistency over time, who's had the most good s- swimmers? Like, they have, like, a few, like, excellent swimmers, like, the best of all time, but... Yeah. Well, look, uh, I, I mean, Australia's definitely competing with America. New the Z- likes of America New Zealand. Canada. New Zealand have to be in the conversation. Really don't. Um, really don't. Really no. don't. No. Finn, we've got our favourite section coming up that Gussie's about to take yes. us into. Let's go, boys. Just we, we can't miss it every single week. Yeah, well, we've got to chuck a little bit of grassroots sports in there, a bit of Bulls Masters do. cricket. And I know it's your boys' favourite segment because you say a hell of a lot. Um, we'll start off with the Western Suburbs and Sandgate Redcliffe game that was at Graceful Memorial Park. Oy, oy. So that's right near Finn's. If you are, I don't think you've ever popped down to watch a game. But Sandgate Redcliffe... Yeah, sweet as, mate. Tell, tell everyone where I live. I haven't told them Doc, the exact Doc's address. I just Doc's said you. you may or may not live in Graceville. Mate, I think you may have some stalkers well, they, coming your way, mate. Look out. I think I do. I'm a good-looking <laughs> bloke. <laughs> you, you just comb the hair over. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? yeah. Maybe you'll have to move, <laughs> maybe you'll have to move yeah. north side, mate. Um, anyway, Sandgate Redcliffe, their first innings total. It wasn't enough to compete with Western Suburbs, who were pretty dominant. Paddy Dooley and Blake Edwards absolutely cleaning up the middle order. Uh, Brother of Josie Dooley, Brisbane Heat um, women's player. Or not anymore, she's a Renegades player. Renegades player. That's right. Um, But Paddy was brilliant with the ball. Uh, Josie was great with the bat on the weekend. Um, Sandgate Redcliffe finished on 10 for 179, so it wasn't enough for them. Western Suburbs, brilliant in response, scoring 350 runs. John T. Patterson hitting a solid 134 off 143 balls. Uh, Western Suburbs then sent Sandgate Redcliffe back into bat again and rolled them for another 130 runs. So they got yeah they got extra points they got extra points on this game for bowling the opposition out twice. So they've leapfrogged a couple teams in the second. So they're right behind UQ. But did he, Richo? But did he? But did he? It's funny. Um, (laughs) So wait, Gussie, how's that um? How's that ladder looking? So, it's looking good for the top two sides. UQ, UQ <laughs> and Western Suburbs are miles ahead of everyone else. It's yep. a two-horse race at the moment. Uh, UQ, of course. Well, ha- sorry. Yeah, are they still are they still above Western Districts in terms of like? Is there a clear gap? Uh, UQ are slightly ahead. It's not a clear gap, but. Okay. Those two are quite clearly ahead of everyone else. So there's the two standout so, sides. And Gussie, you mentioned it before. So when you force a team to bat again, yep. what's the points difference when it comes to the ladder? Um, in regard to points, I don't know how many points they get, but I believe, looking at it before, I think Western Suburbs got about 26 points out of this game. And they're, as in... 26? Yeah, as in, like... It's a tough system because there's about three different ladders and the points go into different, like, combinations. Yeah, it's really confusing. What? There's, yeah, so there's three ladders. There's one for Is a f- two-day competition, one from one day, and an overall, and it all combines into the overall. Okay. So, yeah, it's a really confusing thing to 
look at. You have to go onto the website and actually check it out because it's very strange. So when you've been talking about Bulls Masters cricket, what format have you been talking about? Or have you been so it's talking the, it's the two it? days. Two days are on right now. Two days. They, ha- they have had okay. some one-day games earlier on in the season. So they usually have uh, one-dayers on at the start and at the end of the year. So yep. they've got the two-dayers on at the moment. And it all goes towards the overall, which is the one that... That's the ladder that I've been referring to, the overall. I actually, I actually kind of like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's cool. Imagine seeing, like, the, uh, imagine seeing the Queensland Bulls or even like... You know, at a push international level. Yeah, well, well, that, that. well that's, that what, um, cool. that's what most uh, Queensland sides do. Like, first grade, but also down to sub-districts. They all do one-day and two-day games, and it all goes to the overall. So, it's a cool system. Yeah, and again, mate, we, we talk about the grassroots here. That's what we do, or we try to do it a bit. But at the professional level, how would that succeed? You know, could it succeed? Mm, um, I think so. You know, when... When you have to have players who can perform not just in white ball cricket but red ball cricket, you know, yeah. and the other way around. Um, yeah, I, I think it would bring yeah. more interest to the test matches as well. Yeah, especially if there were more points up for grabs and test matches and stuff yeah. like that. I guess, it um, would, but it would also generate more interest when it comes to um, the short form. So T twenty one hundred percent. Yeah, just because it's so short, and if you have a game which is or you have a you know ladder position. Which mm-hmm. is in the balance yep. going into a three hour match. You know, you know that literally an over can dictate your season, can't it? So mm. again, that's very cool. Well, I mean, food for at the moment at the moment they've got the ICC cricket rankings and they do it all individually. So they do test match, one day, T twenty. So cricket match I C C rankings don't mean diddly squat. Well, I mean they kinda do to cricket sides. Yeah. So but the Australian cricket side won't be happy being ranked eighth. Yeah, when they should probably be a number Are they one eighth or two. At the moment? No, they're not eighth, oh, but God. I think they're. P- yeah, but you'd rather a four. leaderboard like with where you, your result directly impacts, like the amount of points you win directly impacts you hopping up the ladder. Or if there were like yeah, four does, games played at the exact they, same they, time. Yeah, it does. Um, it all contributes, like how much you win by, who you beat. That goes into the ICC, so you mm. rank. Determining on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's similar, but it doesn't take in all the different formats. Yeah. So it just does it individually. And keep in mind, too, Campbell, obviously we have the World Cups and the two short form yes. uh, formats. We do. So the uh, ODI World Cup, which New Zealand was wrongfully robbed of. It was a draw. It was a draw, mate. It was a draw. And you got the T20 World Cup, which is next year. But I mm. think, Gussie, did they introduce it? Was it this year or is it coming into effect as of next year, the ICC Test Championship, um, where teams play each country home and away on varying like series lengths, if that makes sense. So like Australia might play New Zealand. I haven't read about this. Match, in a, there you go. Caught you off guard. Yeah, um, you, you did. I yeah, think I, you know more about this than I do. Oh, okay. I think, uh, I th- I think he expert. just reads. I'm a cricket expert, no. I think he reads too much. <laughs> Such a sporting nerd. It's a good thing to be that's what in it is. our industry. It is. It is a very good thing to be. That's why I'm getting could, into this industry. Yeah. And it can, can we get back to the? That can could we get, almost get you a job at the Korea Mail? I reckon. It yeah, could do, funny. but it's about who you know. It not is. What yeah. you know. Well, can we get back to the uh, Bulls Masters, boys? <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> uh, we went a bit off topic there. Um, please, please. In the second game that we watched uh, this week. Ipswich Logan defeated by the University of Queensland, who are now number one on the ladder. Anthony Wilson, best batsman for Ipswich Logan, scored his third century of the season with 104 runs. He couldn't stop this UQ side. Uh, Ipswich Logan's total of 244 wasn't enough. Um, as BBC old boy Jack Clayton oh, yeah. with uh, 78 runs and Jack Carty with 90 runs helped UQ go on to score three for 303, Ooh. declared. Massive total. UQ and Western Suburbs now sit, as I said, comfortably at the top. UQ in one and Western Suburbs in two. In the other matches, Sunshine Coast were defeated by Northern Suburbs. South Brisbane were defeated by Gold Coast. Valley suffered another defeat, this time at the hands of Redlands. They dropped down to seventh. They dropped down to seventh. seventh. While Winner Manly got a win at home against no. Toomble. There we go. And that was Bulls Masters, our favourite segment of, oh. the, uh, well, of the week. Campbell, you know how... Um 
you know, let's bring it up. You've done some news reading at Triple M. Uh, I think may have. Gussie. I think Gussie'd be really good at that. Do you know why? Why is that? Because he because he loves reading off reading off a script, doesn't he? <laughs> it's funny. That's that's a bit of a joke there. It's... If you don't laugh, if you don't laugh, Gussie, it's just me. mate, mate. Do He's you, just bullying. Do you, you, do you hear the laughs? Do you hear the laughs? <laughs> I'm sure the people I'm are laughing. laughing at home. I'm sure they're just absolutely <laughs> chuffing up over okay, that Okay, ladies, let's move on. Let's move on. Speaking of ladies, we had the WBBL finals weekend. And what a weekend it was. We were there on the Saturday. Couldn't make it on the Sunday, unfortunately. But, Gussie, what did you make of the Saturday itself? The Saturday, what? Well, Another great day out. I love the WBBL. I love Alan Borderfield. I reckon the WBBL is becoming my favourite competition. I think so too. Yeah. It's great. I just, I just love watching cricket at Alan Borderfield. Uh, the Heat women, we saw the Heat women take on the Melbourne Renegades, Melbourne Renegades in the first game. And, uh, in the second game, yep. the first game was the Scorchers and the Strikers. Yes. And, I mean, both games were... You, you knew who was going to win pretty early on, mm. I think. Um, the Heat were pretty dominant, and so were the Strikers. Uh, Beth Mooney, well, brilliant again. Right, no. I mean, she was brilliant in the final, and yeah. she's gone a long way to, you know, the Heat winning this competition. She and really has. Yeah, she she put up her hand again, and they got back-to-back titles. So Definitely, definitely. And, I mean, Josie Dooley well, getting a half-century yeah. in a losing um, side is unfortunate, but she put in a good knock. But where to from now for the Brisbane Heat women? So back-to-back titles. You know, is it enough to go for a three-peat? Or you know, do we have to start seeing them at the Gabba and stuff? Or what's no, I, I don't like, I, I don't like, like Alan Border. I like Alan Border. I think it suits them fine. It's great ground. Plenty of people came in as well. I, I think lots of people in. And it was a scorcher, absolute scorcher on um, Saturday. It was. I think they could benefit from putting in some more stands somewhere. Because yeah. like, they did have temporary stands in on the weekend. Yeah. Um, but they're usually not there. But I think if they could put one right outside the Q, QC building, that yeah, would help. The, sometimes it's str- you struggle for seating unless you're in the main stands. And it's all grass and it's not hill. Like, yeah. It's just not tiered. So a lot where we were sitting, we had to kind of sit up in our chairs to get over the picket fence because we couldn't really see the ground. Um, so maybe that's something they could do install some you know what i'm fanging though gussie a oh, calippo mate I'm, I'm fanging a calippo right now we had calippo. about five calippos it was it was <laughs> literally 40 degrees yeah the beers were so warm <laughs> by the, the time cali- he, by the time he bought it and brought it back it was warm it was like it was wa- uh, it was room temperature well, the F- they ran out of espos paper right <laughs> as i got there i was like really? you were just holding me. the <laughs> you yeah were just i was like, holding the spicy waters for about yeah. like an good hour five minutes ten minutes it was the worst yeah but anyway, um, it was a good about, spot. So, an alternative. Um, should the WBBL be played at a different time of year? So obviously, obviously we have the men playing in you know December, January. Is that when the women need to be playing? Um, well, I think I think it's a good kind of lead into the men's season. Yeah, actually, I think I, it's a good timing because it, it's the summer of cricket, and it's while you know there's midweek games, and it's not while there's. Uh, well, there are some international games on, but it's it's kind of almost a dead period in terms of commercialised cricket. Mm. And I think it's a good yep. time to put it on because it it's going to be hard for them to compete with the male format of the game. That's what um, I was going to say. Format yeah, of the yeah, game. yeah, people would... Exactly. At the moment, people prefer the going... At the moment, people prefer going to the BBL. So having the WBBL at a completely separate times, good, I believe. You don't want it to become a, uh, a curtain raiser, do you? Yeah, I you think really don't. That's what it's become. Well, that's what it was over the last few mm. seasons. Um, yeah, it definitely was. It was like, uh, yeah, WBBL, oh, although then go to the BBL. That yeah. that that was yeah. just to get eyes on it. it. It was brand new, so they wanted people to like tune in before the BBL, so they got, got to see what's going on in the WBBL competition and go, mm. you know what, this is and all I right. Think- I'm going to watch it. And I think it's good that they've separated it now and people are still turning up and watching. Yeah, for sure. Well, I think it, it could be bigger next year after the um, Women's T20 World Cup in February. Mm. So come, you know, BBL. W- what is it, Gussie? WBBL 4 five. next year? No, no this was five. five. It's six, six, is six, next year. six is next year. Six wow. next year. There you go. But again, that could be the uh, biggest comp yet, I think. I think so. Especially if, especially if Australia win the... World Cup, as they should. They, they won should, it this yeah. Year. Mm. Um, they should, for sure. Last year, mm-hmm. it's one of the two. Um, and I think they're, sp- they're expecting like sellout MCG crowds at, at those at those games. So yeah. Yeah. again, 
hopefully the WBBL reaps those rewards. Yeah. Anyway, I want to talk a little bit about a spectator that was seated behind myself and Campbell. Um, you, you know you always get those kind of spectators that are very mouthy, they've had a, maybe a few spicy waters, and you know they love chirping, they love saying something. I just want to mention some of the things he he said because they were <laughs> were very 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 hilarious. Um, we'll start off with the first one. Finn, you're you're actually hearing these for the first time, so no, you were, is, you actually sent them to me in a text. Did so I actually? Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, 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 these well, I'm saying them out loud now, so you'll hear them again. They're obviously first timers. Never buy tickets on the east side of the Gabba. He's got a point. He's, he's got, got a point. He's, he's bringing up a great point. Let's not remind. Let, let's remind everyone that this guy was shouting. He was yelling. He thought he was the funniest person yeah. in the ground, and everyone of, was just mocking him the whole time. Yeah, yeah, live at the Apollo. This bloke. He's yeah, very <laughs> chirpy. Um, this is the next one. Go put your face on for the pub crawl. Yeah, that was really a terrible one. That was. It was um. <laughs> I um I did chuckle a little bit at that one. That was pretty funny. Um, the Perth Stadium. So maybe is... he was the maybe he was the funniest guy on the ground. If you were laughing. Yeah, well, I mean, some of them I had to just laugh because yeah, they they were just great. Because I know we've all been there. You know, we've we've said some uh said some stuff that we might want to take back. But um, you know, I found it entertaining. <laughs> It was. I was good, it was a good little bit of commentary. Just shut up. Yeah, <laughs> it's just so annoying. Um, yeah. The Perth Stadium is just the Gabba on roids. Yeah, that was a choice that one. one. That, that was, Again, that was a not. Sh- I. It was just not funny. Yeah. Just, I mean, he, he thought it was insightful. It just wasn't. You can see the connection he's making there. I mean, God, I mean, similar wickets. But yeah, I just I think he's just talking out of his you know what. Yes, honestly. Um, then he went on to say that Queensland have been robbed of an, a New Zealand Test. Mm. Uh, I I actually agreed with him yeah. on that one. I don't so. think we're giving this justice though. Yeah, this guy was just, <laughs> <laughs> just screaming, <laughs> bloody hilarious, just screaming this stuff out. Yeah. Um, this one was pretty funny. Yeah, and he said one. this really strangely. Um, yeah. check it. Good flag technique. Snapping in the breeze. <laughs> that was the funniest one. Yeah. I just heard out of nowhere. Check it. He's like, Check it. Good flag technique. Snapping in the breeze. While holding. <laughs> and also, they had these massive, like, mega lining heads and, like, yeah. Kirby short heads and stuff like that. It was like just this. like the ultimate Brisbane Heat sporter. He really was. Um, anyway, we'll move on from cricket. Um, the tale of two chiefs. Finn, take us away. The New Zealand All Blacks have got a new head coach. What do we think? They do, mate. It was D-Day for the All Blacks, I think. Um, it was between Razor, Scott Robertson, the Crusaders coach, and Ian Foster, the All Blacks assistant coach. Mm-hmm. Ian Foster got the nod, but, man, it's when you um, it's when you compare it to the new appointment, Dave Rennie, the new Wallabies coach, that you really start to think maybe this was the wrong decision. Yep. Uh, maybe you know international teams will be reeling. At this uh, at this appointment, um, just some stats we saw before. They've both coached at the Chiefs, um, Dave Rennie and Ian Foster. That is, Foster's won two two super titles compared to Foster's donor. So, what does that say about a bloke who can coach at the top level when he can't deliver trophies? Yeah, it's a bit tough. How are you getting an international gig at that point? Um, Again, he's he's kind of um, you know he's been the assistant coach for the All Blacks for eight years. I think he was part of the setup for the four years prior to yeah. that, so he's been involved for a while. But that doesn't mean you're a good you're a good head coach, and I think that's the concern for me as an All Blacks fan, you know. And again, compare it to Dave Rennie. Dave Rennie, he's been there, he's tested himself, and he's well and truly earned this call up for the Wallabies. And for me, the Wallabies have now got a better coach. I think so too. I think they do too. And I hope, especially with the talent we've got coming through at the moment. I think the uh, Wallabies could be in a good kind of spell here, especially with the downturn. How long will he last, do you think, Finn? Who's that, Dave Rennie? No. um, Or Ian Foster? Ian Foster. Um, He signed a two-year contract. Um, So, but to be honest, the way the All Blacks are, you know, 
he won't get fired. Two year contracts. Your that doesn't seem like a lot. Two year contracts an interesting one. Do you want it to be is, giving a coach a four year contract? That's the thing. I think rugby's heavily dictated now by the World Cup cycle. Yeah. And having teams on a four year having coaches on a four year deal they should to be. take you to the next World Cup and then you reassess. That's what I like think. The All Blacks. I think they're kind of they're kind of taking a page out of South Africa's book. Uh, Razi Erasmus, he was brought in, you know, eighteen months before the World Cup. Uh, he brought in something different, a new face, mm-hmm. fresh ideas. Well was he and already look what happened? Was Rassi Erasmus already in the system as a director of rugby? Director of rugby, yeah. And then he again, appointed himself, basically. No, he, he didn't appoint himself. He, uh, he was pretty much the only candidate at that point. Okay. Or the only one South Africa was seriously considering. But basically, the thing I want to take out of this appointment is Australia. Legislow could be back soon. Um, kills me to say it, but... Woo! Woohoo! Woohoo! Yeah, Again, I hope so. Chahu, it's Chahu. Big old Chahu. It it's, is um, definitely Chahuable. No, it's um again the wave of talent that we've talked about before, uh, the junior Wallabies and stuff with Dave Rennie, who's a good coach. Mm, good coach for the youth as well. I can't say the same. Exactly, and I can't say the same about yeah New Zealand. So dire situation, but dire again, straight. time will tell. It will tell. Anyway, let's move on to the A League. Uh, Gussie, take us away with this one again. Well, the A League. We love the A League. Uh, we do. We, it's probably another one of my favourite competitions. I got a lot of them out there. Um, this week. Well, you can't. Have, you can't have more than one favourite. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah I can. What do you mean? Yeah, yes. I can. Is this? Are you bandwagoning well, they're, here? They're I'm not bandwagoning. They're, Sorry, they're I love sport. sport. You are Switzerland, my friend. What do you mean? I'm Switzerland. You're just everyone's friend. You're everyone's favourite. You don't take a side. It's not a bad place to be. Except you don't like AFL and you don't rug- like Rugby Union. Yeah. I mean, I like Rugby Union. What are you talking about? I just don't like AFL. Mm. I mean, I, I don't hate it. I just don't follow it. Mm. Um, mm. Anyway. Mm. Hayley. Can we talk about what, the Phoenix? Please. Yeah. No, I was, I was going to talk about Melbourne Please? City first. Because Melbourne City, they've been looking the goods this year. Lot. This was the biggest shock of the yeah. week. I, and... Oh, actually, Wellington winning might have been a bigger shock. Yeah, maybe. But Melbourne oh, yeah. City oh, knocked yeah. off by That's Perth right. Glory at home. 3-0 to Perth. Top versus <laughs> bottom? Yeah. Um, was it? No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was. At the time. At the time it was. Yeah. yeah. Um, Melbourne City. Perth, Perth were bottom. <sighs> yeah. mm. Or Me- Melbourne City might have been in second. Yeah. One of the two. Um, yeah, but they were just brilliant. Perth. Um, coming back, they, we talked... We bad mouthed them a little bit. A screamer. Yeah, we we uh, bad mouthed them a bit on the podcast last week, so maybe they were listening. Yeah, that's maybe. definitely what they were doing. They were listening and they go, "Oh, pre-game." He's beyond the sidelines, fools. Have given us the kick up the. You maybe know Bruno Fornaroli was listening pre-game and was like, "You know what? I'm going to have to switch on and play a good game before." He does look like an angry man, but it wasn't it at his old um, stomping ground. At his old club. Yeah. yeah so when he. When he scored, he didn't celebrate, so good on him. Good on him. I um, like that. But, yeah, he, he played a great game, didn't he? He uh, really did. Big upset. Great great result for Perth, eh? Because I mm. think they needed that. That was one of those results where they needed to start winning those games you shouldn't. That yes. makes sense. Um, yeah. And they did. And they're up to seventh now, I think. So the Phoenix oh, will inevitably yeah. fall out of the top six. Yeah, well, and speaking of, that spot, so. we had a potential, yeah. one of our spoon candidates at the start of the season, yeah. Finn... I'll let you go yeah. here, mate. Where do I start? Dreams do come true, Campbell. Um, <laughs> you've been praying? You're a religious man? True. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you've course, won course, two course. games um, in a row. Three games in a row, Gus. He's going to make it four. Um, <laughs> mate, Great. Do your research. Martin Luther, Martin Luther King Jr., <laughs> he had a dream, and <laughs> some would say this was it. Um, <laughs> I have a dream. Phoenix, that Wellington will win three games out of three. And Martin, <laughs> they've done just that, mate. For God's sake. They've only gone they've and done, done it. They've done just that. Cha-hoo. Mate, no, it's a, um, I was following the score updates because I couldn't watch it at the time, and it was um, it was kind of grim. It was kind of classic, especially being a Warriors fan. It was quite similar in that they take a, Two nil a lead. lead. Yeah. You know, they, well, they take... No, it was a 1-0 lead. Oh, one Jesus, nil. mate. Uh, it was a 1-0 lead, and then, like, two minutes later or so... Adelaide equalised. No, mm. Wanderers equalised. And then, yeah, it was an 89th minute penalty. So, anyway, that is, great result yeah. for the Phoenix. 
great result for the Phoenix, and yeah. I think they have Western United this week, so I think well, that'll do. be a good on test the, for them. On the other hand, the West, Wanderers have yeah. lost four games in a row now. I mean, we thought they'd do poorly. They yeah. did well, and now they're doing poorly. So I yeah. think they went through a little bit of a purple patch. They're coming back down. They're finding where their place is yeah. at the bottom of the ladder. Yeah. Well, uh, Davila, the little Mexican's doing very well for you, uh, Finn. He is, mate. Made the team of the he week. Is, he is. He's killing it. I think seven goals this season, I want to say. Yeah. Um, yeah. Six or seven, something like that. Yeah, I think Louis it's seven. But again, he's been great. And I guess no one's even mentioned the name Gary Hooper yet. No. Largely because he hasn't been he playing. He hasn't been playing yet. But he was supposed to be he was supposed to be our marquee signing, wasn't he? Yes. He was supposed to be the guy who was our fr- who was the threat up front. Mm. And you know, when he's back, those two playing up front together, man, sparks will fly. Yes, exactly. My and sparks like will fly. looking at your underlying stats, like you have been taking quite a lot of shots. You have been not conceding that many so it's almost unlucky that you were in a poor place at the time you just couldn't finish your dinner couldn't hit a barn door with a banjo and no. you know you had you got yourself into the upper into the areas taking good shots they just weren't on target gary hooper was away he comes back maybe he's making a difference now uh well will be yeah um Hope so, mate. Uh, actually and at the back you guys does have he have been... does he have to i mean yeah they're already the most dominant team in the league. Okay, okay, right. okay, mate. Okay, let's move on. Are we getting carried away? Let's actually move on to the actual most dominant team in the league, oh, Sydney FC. They gave the Brisbane Roar an absolute thumping, a lesson in football. Um, Adam LaFondra, I mentioned this early, scoring a hat-trick, uh, his debut hat-trick, I think, for the um, A-League, his first in six years at Jubilee Stadium. Yeah, out of Jubilee. Weird place. Well, they've had a couple of games. I, think I like it, actually. They, they had the semi-final uh, or the qualifying final against the Something. one where they thumped victory last year. Yeah. Um, that was at Jubilee. So it's a good ground to hold football at. I would love that. people show up. I would love that ground in Brisbane for the Raw. Oh, yeah. That's like the perfect yeah, size Well, that's, that's what you need. They've had a few at Jubilee. They've had some at uh, Campbelltown, I believe. Um, yes, they have. Yeah, and then, but and they their home, change. yeah, their home ground is uh, Sydney Cricket Ground. Ugh. Who wants to play there? Ugh. The Roosters. Yeah, well, Ugh. Not a football side, but yeah. Well, sorry. depends who you ask. <laughs> Some people call rugby league football. It's um, a game. No, but so. that's great, Gussie. It's, it is a game, mate. It is a game, and not a great one at that. No, Campbell. Um, it's funny. I think funny, don't mate. Start, don't start that uh, stadium chat up again. No, oh, we could big discussion point. keep on again, going about it. I think Brisbane's Jubilee is Redcliffe, and I think that's kind I of I think the it is, too. I think it is, too. I wouldn't mind seeing... Well, they've got another game there this season, I think, um, and I'd like to see them play more. They're going the forward. The Redcliffe Raw. The Redcliffe Raw. Let's make it happen. Like Slap it. it on a T-shirt. Um, they extend their lead on the top of the A-League ladder mm. um, by to five. Uh, with Melbourne City's loss on the weekend um, with that 5-1 thumping. Now, how about this? How about turning back the clocks here? Bessar Barisha. The Albanian. Scoring two goals against Melbourne Victory. Uh, against his old club. Yeah, this is Melbourne Everyone's Vic- scoring against their old club yeah, this week. Yeah, they uh, Western United, of course, winning that game 3-1. This is now Melbourne Victory's fifth loss in uh, this season. Um their coach, Marco Kurz, I believe I'm Kurtz, pronouncing yeah. it, Kurtz. Um, how long do you think this guy has left? Because this is the worst uh, the victory have started to an A-League season for a long time. Yeah. I think it's ever. I mean, It'd be in the, I think it's in the record books. It's probably one of the worst. Is. Um, is, the writing's on the wall, I think. Ever. Time's ticking. Well, they're in ninth place now on the A-League ladder. Mm. Well, they're in, they're in ninth, and that's only mm. because Central Coast, who are one point... Behind them, aren't they? I yeah, think something, something like, like that. They're yeah. one point, something like that. Yeah, no, victory to tenth. Central Coast are one point Jeez. behind them. Yeah, well, yeah, they're tenth. This got, is true. God. And they've got, <laughs> and they've got two games in hand. Central yep. Coast. So, basically, all they have to do is draw twice the Mariners, and victory will be rocking the bottom of the pile. Oof. That's, I genuinely don't know if that's ever happened in the history of the A League. Yeah, I'm not sure um, either. And this is. Kind of what I was trying to say before about there's a bit of a shift, I think, this year in the A-League. Um, you know, new teams are kind of rising up, I think. And yeah. Victory. Mate, they are... Maybe they're taking a year off. Honestly. Maybe. Don't qualify for the... A- maybe they're going, let's not qualify... For, uh, let's not qualify for Asia. 
and let's go hard next year. Well, I honest, know. I think this I has know. just been one of the most inconsistent seasons I think I've ever seen. Um, and the thing with the A-League is it's such a small competition that you can turn around your season so quickly. Like yeah. two wins... And you could see like Brisbane Raw up well, in the top five. Case like, in point, Wellington, Wellington, Phoenix, exactly. They were last. They were last, and now they're fifth. And like, <laughs> it, it just turns so quickly. Yeah, they're not exactly. I do, I exactly. do want to talk they're about a smoky. Kind of the Phoenix. Right? Yeah, Let's I do. I do want to talk about a smoky in this comp. Adelaide United. They're not even yeah. a smoky uh, at this I, point. I, they were at the start of the season. Yeah, well, now I think not look, so much. They're, they've kind of gone under the radar a little bit here. Um, I've been hyping they're up, up for into, weeks. Yeah, I mean you have, but. Not everyone else has been, you know, recognise them as, you know, potential threats for this competition. They're up in third, you know, right behind Melbourne City. Um, so, and, and and they got another win, of course, against Newcastle mm. United this week, 2-1. So, uh, yeah, all, all good signs in Adelaide. and Certainly. Hopefully. It, it'd be but nice think, to see a different side win it. Exactly. Year. And they've got good young talent coming through oh. with uh, Riley McGree having an absolute Riley blinder McGree. of a season. Alassane Toure, which we um, outlined at the start of the season, he scored in this game and got himself into the um, into the team of the week. Um, what were you going to say, Finn? I was just going to say, I think the door is open for a team to contest with Sydney. Um, but it's which team's going to you know go ahead and do that. I don't know. Adelaide, maybe. Um, like you said, Gussie, they've taken that step up, but can they go even further? I think so. Yeah. I think they can. I think I if like they keep their squad them. this season, maybe make some more additions. Hopefully they do it this season, but hopefully next season well, they'll they be were the it. FFA Cup champions. They were the FFA well. Cup champions, so yes. It, that shows that they've got the potential to win a title. Uh, it's not an A-League title, but... You know, they've got silverware already. Yeah. Maybe they'll add another the one, interesting thing add about the toilet seat to it. The toilet seat. The thing about the A-League, though, guys, is it was a few years ago now when Adelaide won their title, like their grand final in the A-League. Mm. I think 10 weeks before the finals started, they were last. <sighs> so, you know, we can talk about victory. You know, We can write them off. We can write off the Mariners, whoever. But that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Mm. Yeah. Um, that kind of... That's also a good thing, but also a bad thing about the A League, I guess. And yeah, just highlights how much of a joke it is, but also it's good. Shows that there's a reason to be faithful as a yeah. fan base who is struggling at well, the moment. Well, there's a reason to watch because anyone can beat anyone on any given day, which is yeah. really good for the competition. Exactly. Um, and you've seen we've seen it already. Teams like Wellington, who win a couple of times, and sk- they skyrocket throughout the league, don't they? Mm. Through the through the ladder. So it's um all it takes is a couple of wins. Jets and uh, yeah, you're a contender. Exactly, exactly. Well, we're going to skip NBL this weekend because we, we're sure RJ Hampton and uh, Lamelo Ball are killing it. Um, well, but Lamelo's injured, so is he? I good. didn't see. I watched a bit of the yeah. Breakers game on the weekend, and uh, RJ Hampton wasn't playing for some reason. Um, yeah, okay. I don't know why that is. The Breakers getting there. I want to say their fourth win of the season. Keep it up, <sighs> guys. That's oh, yeah. keep it going against the Bullets. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. No. They did play against, they did play against the Bullets this week. They did play against Cairns as game. well. So yeah. maybe that was all in the one spot. Um maybe they just did no, one trip I, up. Just just touch on that. I know we're skipping this. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we've but, been uh, talking about L- it. Yeah. Uh Lamello, he's out for four weeks apparently. Four so weeks. um it, something to consider. Is he injured? Or is he, you know, just kind of going, Look, I'm projected to go number one. Let's just let's sit let's out a bit cut of it the now. season, get paid yeah. and yeah. Yeah, I think he'll be tacking on a yeah. few weeks to the uh, end of his injury anyway. Even if it was like a two week injury, go to well, we'll take four off, just so there's no well, they're risk. Coming last. Exactly, there's they're no reason. Last, so there's no, there's no chance of a ship, is there? No. Well, I mean, then what's the point so? of him going over in the first place is, if he's not going to play? Is he doing well, he, a Nick Bosa? What did Nick Bosa do? He sat out. The, he got injured halfway through the college season, or he sat out his senior year. Then got picked number yeah. two or three, um, and yep. now he's just whoa, he's killing it in the NFL. Yeah, but I think Lamelo, he's come down under and he's done exactly what he needs to do, and that's be in that discussion for the first overall pick, and he's done that. So job done. Next. I think so. I think he's uh, NBA bound, of course. Um, but I think he exactly. will he play another NBL game. Who knows? Illawarra, you may see may have seen your brightest days gone. Um, 
but staying with the American sports in Australia, we had the ABL this weekend. Another, it's a bit of a weirder weekend. Last weekend was a little bit more dominant, more sweeps, more um, dominant games. This weekend, we saw one of the most dominant ABL games ever. Uh, but we'll get into the first round. We'll go down in order. We saw um, the biggest winner being the Auckland Tuatara. Uh, they took on the Canberra Cavalry in North Harbour Stadium, a rugby stadium. They beat them 1-3 um, in the series. Mate, what a I, week to be a New Zealand fan, eh? I hate that stadium. I was watching a Why? few of the games. It I, sucks. I love it. I think it's, I think it's great. It looks um, terrible. There's no, the stadium's empty. There's no one there. Yeah. Like, there's no backdrop. It's just they've chucked big. Is it things right? In the is ground. it right on the harbour as well? Mm, not really. It'd be cold. It's, if it was yeah, right on the harbour. It's the region. It's yeah. The region North Harbour. Right, yeah. But it's um, no, it's a rugby stadium, isn't it? Yeah, and it is. Just plonked a baseball on one side. Diamond. So you have the yeah, stadium yeah. going up one side, and then you have just nothing on the other side. So weird. Again, it's it's just like the A League, mate. Just like the A League. Same thing. If you're gonna do that. Make sure the people come. Yeah, if exactly. If they don't, go go play at some regional ground. Exactly. Because that would be much more accommodating, I think. Exactly. Anyway, exactly. As you as you were. On last week, we were trying to figure out what Tuatara meant. If it was just a collection of words, what it was, collection of letters. I found out, boys. Oh, really? I did. It wow. is a rare species of. Uh, lizard? lizard, a reptile. It's the well, one that is their logo. That explain the logo. Yeah. Only found in New Zealand. Oh, okay. Little yeah. dinosaur-looking thing. It's called the Tuatara. Tuatara or Tatara, whatever Tuatara. it's called. I don't speak Maori, so I don't know. Um, but in the battle of the most boring logos, we had the Adelaide Giants taking on Geelong Korea at Geelong uh, <laughs> Baseball Stadium. Uh, it was 2-2, so it was a draw, but obviously they all go into the end of the season. Um, highlight of this fixture being Friday night thumping by Adelaide of Geelong with the offence really turning up um, and putting 25 runs I'm so- to 8. How, how do they manage to draw the series after a loss like that? Very interesting, isn't it? Geelong, I think, won the first game and then they got thumped 25-8 the next day. And then it was one apiece for was the this rest a, of the weekend. Was this in Geelong as well? It was in Geelong, yeah. That is disappointing. He beat Very like disappointing. 25 runs? Uh, people would have just left. <laughs> I thought that was, I was, when I saw that, I thought that was a misprint. Yeah, I thought it was too. It That's was embarrassing. Absolutely insane. Great stuff from Adelaide Campbell. there. Wait, Campbell, dumb it down for us, mate. Say like, let's talk soccer. Let's talk football. Yeah. What's that? What's that school like That's in football terms? Pretty much anywhere between, I guess. I guess yeah, anywhere between. It's at least double, almost triple to five times as much as you'd usually score. So sometimes games okay. can be three to one. Sometimes they can be one nil. Yeah. Sometimes they can be it's nine eight, thirteen eight. Yeah. I don't think I've seen a run a game go past fifteen sixteen in a very long time, it's, especially it, a nine inning game. To me, it's sounding like if I was con- going to compare it to football, it's like a side game beaten by ten goals plus. Yeah. Um, not quite that. Maybe not that. Maybe like eight nil. Which you don't see very much. That's still pretty shocking. Or like that 9-1 that we saw a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, One of those kind of really rare moments. But still, teams do hit into double figures relatively frequently. Um, But it's almost like just like double, I guess, what they'd normally score. Um, But that was really awesome and one for the spectator, I guess. Mm. Not so much for the um, fielding team at the time. Not sure Geelong had a fun day. Uh, But then the Perth Heat took on the Melbourne Aces. Um, in another even-sided affair, 2-2. And another 2-2 to wrap up the weekend. It's a bit of a state of origin grub match uh, with our Brizzy yeah. Bandits taking on the Sydney Blue Sox in Sydney. I think it was in Campbelltown Stadium or Blacktown Stadium or something like that, probably Blacktown. Um, it was 2-2, as I said. And a big congrats has to go out to Tim Atherton, uh, one of the Bandits' starting pitchers for reaching 300 ABL strikeouts, the same pitcher who beat the USA. Wow. Um, so he's absolutely killing it. He's flying one of the ABL's top um, pitchers and leading, I think, the league in ERA, or at least the Bandits in ERA. What's up, mate? Cam, I need a butt in, mate. Um, Go for it. Last week, you embarrassed me. How so? Um, do you remember? Do you remember what you said? I don't. No, no, no. <laughs> we were listing through baseball team names, mentioning colours with the word socks after it. Yes. And I said, "Aren't the aren't the black socks a team?" And what did uh, you say? I said, "No, it's the Red Sox." 
Well, Red there's Sox the White Sox. Gussie. Well done. Well, no, that's what he White said. Sox are a team. Yeah. Where are the Black Sox from, mate? Spit it out. Is it a minor league team? The long white cloud. That's right. It's, no, it's, uh, it's the national team. I thought of it that night. What, your national um, team? Yeah, the New Zealand <laughs> baseball team. Oh, for God's sake. When do they ever play? <laughs> All the time. No, All I don't the time. Know. I don't know. Again, just like just your football team. You out. Um, yeah, just, just like I know more about cricket than Gussie now, as you said. <laughs> I think I know more wow, about that's baseball brave than you now. Okay. So you can believe that. It's what? getting to the point where, since I am the funny guy... Mm. What are you two still doing here? Can you tell me what ERA stands for? Huh, you tell me. Earned run average. Okay. Uh, I, got a, I got a question for Finn. Why doesn't he? Why doesn't he ever show up to the studio? This is a great point. One, I was in Japan. Sorry. <laughs> Were you? We're more important than that. <laughs> I wasn't actually, no. I was <laughs> You're putting hats on pigeons. Um, that's where we'll wrap it up, where we ended it off. <laughs> no, I thought no, you were going to come no, in with a funny guy Finn comment. He's not funny. I've so. just got no backup to that. you got no backup no to that. Backup if I say that, you've um, got putting pigeon, hats on pigeons, then get you putting hats on pigeons. It's such a strange thing to say. I didn't know what you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, no, is this a joke about my intelligence? Is this a joke about Campbell in general? Um, no, or is this just we Finn got, being Finn? We had enough digs at your intelligence last week, mate. But no, yeah. it's a um, genuine, genuine story. So I guess check it out. <laughs> I'm gonna. I have some reading to do. I have some reading to do. Anyway, mate, there's there's photos of them. Oh, I need to go see this. All right, I'm getting on this. They've got little hats on. <laughs> little Who hats put on. Them there? Mm. How did they get there? I That's have. That's what I want to know. No idea. Asking okay, the big question. Just wrap up. Yeah, for sure. Also, another shout out, Goofy. Um, what did he get? 200 RBIs on the weekend. Um, not over the whole weekend, but first like ABL player to get 200 AB, uh, RBIs, which is pretty bloody awesome. Um, but anyway, that's where we'll wrap it up. Uh, if you want to follow us on Instagram, please do at underscore beyond the sidelines underscore. Go get us on Facebook at beyond the sidelines, YouTube beyond the sidelines. Um, please go listen to us. If you're not already listening on Spotify, go listen to it on Spotify. Go listen to it on Facebook. Listen to it everywhere. Give us some rates. Give us some reviews. We really love it. Tell us how you're liking the podcast. Tell us how you like Minna. Just give us feedback. We love feedback. We're learning. You're learning. Everyone's learning. It's a great experience. Don't we just love it, boys? Sorry. Oh, I was Gus scrolling. Oh, Gus I, was, I was scrolling through my Instagram. We're not what? done. No, when no. the mics are on, See? we're on. Sorry. See, we're still learning. Gussie, he, Gussie, he's focused because this week in kindergarten, he's uh, learning about shapes. Ooh, I thought he was still Dude, doing what OP, did, what OP did you get? Yeah, sit down. What's your GPA? <laughs> All right, on that What note, subject did you do? <laughs> Journalism. All right, More. boys, this uh, you-know-what contest is over. Uh, More. <laughs> thanks for listening. <laughs>